you what of my people this is how we're gonna start out the day you know what i always I always start out with a pretty cool shirt you know what i'm saying and and this is the vibe i'm in right now so i'm in the vibe of making sure riders drivers everybody out there knows you know people are out there realizing what's going on in ride share right now i mean there's been settlements i mean up in new york city there's been lawsuits and everything else this is what we want people to know we want to make sure people realize this so talk to your driver talk to your rider let people know hey you know what what up logan block my man and let people know hey man i might not get the whole fare you're paying i don't know what you paid you might have paid 25 dollars. you might have paid 50 dollars. i don't know what up south florida so hey can you guys hear pretty well in the microphone i know uh youtube was having an issue earlier it kept like hanging up and coming back in and hanging up what up vic hey, i just saw your email today on uh instagram vic i just saw that all for kicks what's good hey i hope everybody's out there you know getting this money man like i said it's a lot of money that's gonna be going on for thanksgiving i went out last night for a little bit and it wasn't too bad it actually wasn't too bad but i was like man larry he's like Larry's at first man i don't know is i think logan was first man my man logan out in vegas was first what up ibrahim they like, doordash is where the money's at <laughs> shoot if they ain't tipping you ain't tripping forget that man and i tell people last night i was out for a while last night cruising man it was actually pretty decent i didn't make a lot last night but i was looking at all the stuff that was coming down the pipe just for the holidays and things like that i did probably about four or five trips total but i just wanted to kind of it's kind of like what i did when super bowl was here i went out and kind of scouted for a couple of days before i really realized where the money was going to be so today i like i said i got an airport reservation at um say whenever the apps make changes there's no request yeah exactly but I got an uh, airport reservation coming up at about 5.30 today. So this is going to be one of those. I even got my alarm set because you know how we can get going, going, going. And I'll forget what time it is. And I'm like, oh, shit, my airport guy sitting up at the airport right now. So I got to go get uh, do an airport pickup, another private ride or whatever. But get your money this holiday season, y'all. You already know. You already know. $92 and two active hours. That's what's up. Th these apps are going to be gouging people. They're going to be gouging, man. They're going to be out there trying to get as much as they can out of these riders. They're not going to be paying drivers. They're going to create profits this season. Because if you looked in the uh, news lately, you saw Uber right now, of course, they're running low on cash. So what they're doing is selling, you know, billion dollar bonds right now. They're trying to do some billion dollar bond payable in 2028. That's in five years from now. So they... If they really didn't need the money and they were really making the profits they claim they were making right now, I don't think they'd be selling bonds right now. So I'm like, hey, man, it's something going on in ride share. And they really got a, a scheme coming up where they're going to get all this money, get this billion dollars up front, buy all these driverless vehicles to do something drastic. And once they do that, that's when we know, OK, shit just hit the fan and we wouldn't paying attention. What up, Fortune Jama? Sports betting in AZ. Easy money. There you go. Monday's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey invisible rands at monday's gonna suck i bet it does i bet it does but you know what? we're gonna still stay out here pushing because i tell people you know what what do you think about those v6 dodge durangos logan block said hey what do you think about those v6 dodge durangos thank you for the super chat my brother man them v6 dodge durangos and those it's some explorers out right now i think it's some some type of turbo explorer ford explorer out they on youtube getting it man they killing everybody out there and those v6 dodge durangos are pretty nice they pretty nice i know you might want to look into also with that one transmission issues possible transmission issues but for the most part man i don't know dodge durangos they're nice they're spacious they're nice big trucks they look good man and they got a lot of horsepower so you can get up in those things man you can get up in those ezra said hallelujah jeff's in the house where my popcorn hey today you won't need a big bag brother I only had a little bit of time to get online today because I got to do a private airport ride. And once I drop him off, I'm going to probably start doing rides because I'll be kind of farther away from the craziness. So my day is going to get started a little earlier today. I mean, it's Thanksgiving. Hopefully the apps don't rip us off. That's all I keep saying. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know how it rolls. Uber and Lyft, they steal fares and tips. So and we got to let people know if you want to deal straight up with me, deal straight up with me because they might gouge you as a rider. You might be paying $28, $30 for a ride, but all of a sudden, you know, I'm only going to get $9, $10. Oh, yeah, the live's going to be short. You know me. A two-hour live is short for me. <laughs> a two-hour live for me is like walking around the block once. <laughs> it's like, shoot, man, I got to go out and get that money today, man. Like I said, these live streams, and I tell people, 
People always think YouTubers make a ton of money. You don't make a ton of money till you get into 200, 300,000 sub counts and your videos, every video you're getting is, you know, 100,000 views. And like I said, YouTube, it costs me more to be on YouTube than just me being out there driving. But I don't mind giving up my time sometimes to keep our community tight, man. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you. So I get online, man. I keep our community tight. I sit here. I rock with everybody, you know, for an hour, two hours, five hours. So I appreciate all the super chats and all of that stuff because it helps keep me going. It helps keep us, you know, out in these streets, keeping tires on the car, puts fuel in it so I can get up, gas that thing up and go out and try to make some money. But most of the times I'm only I'm only working out. You know, I'm only working four days a week now. The market is so saturated. I can't really get out there at night and really get a good grind in because this is the slow period right now. It's not a lot of traffic going on, not a lot of travel going on. Everybody's saving up money. And, you know, the apps are gouging people, gouging them. And so, and on the back of my shirt, let me show you what the back of my shirt says. Hold up. If I could turn this thing around. Wait a minute. Let me turn this other way right here. So this is the back of my shirt. So I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what it is. Thank you, Invisible Ranch. Thank you for the super chat. But I tell you, man, we need to end tips and gouge, end theft and gouging because they're stealing from drivers. They're gouging the riders. Nobody's winning in this situation other than the apps. And like I said, the apps are none but the interface. They are not the service itself. They're a ride hailing service. And I was reading the article, too, and, and Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett was saying, oh, he likes the Uber. He likes Uber as a company because Uber is like, you know, it's a it's a verb. He says something like Uber is a verb, kind of like, hey, man, go run me a Xerox. It's like running me a copy of something. Hey, go run me a Xerox. It is. And when people say, hey, man, what up, AZ Prod? And it's like when AZ say, hey, man, I mean, when they go, hey, man, uh, I need to Uber somewhere. He said Uber became a verb. Once Uber became a verb. What up, Robert Reese? He said, once Uber became a verb, that word Uber became a verb. Somebody's going to Uber somewhere. I need to Uber to your house. And he said, that's when he knew that Uber was here to stay. Once he became a verb. And so with Uber knowing that Warren Buffett backs them up, what up, Bonds Road? Once you got Warren Buffett kind of backing you up with your little business plan. And you're like I said, Uber and Lyft have been accused of stealing, caught stealing. They've been accused of, you know, insider trading pretty much. Been caught doing insider trading, fine for it. They've been caught doing so many things, but yet you got, you know, the elites. The elites saying these criminals are a great corporation. These criminals are a good company. I like their brand. I like their brand. How do you like a brand that's stealing from people and exploiting people? That, that That's what fucks me up right there. You like a brand that you know steals, that you know has broken so many, like, laws and statutes and violations, financial crimes in America to the point where they're sued and fined all the time. You like that brand where they're exploiting people. You like that brand. That kind of threw me a little bit because I'm like, these are the elites talking to the elites. Yeah, they're not talking to us. The normal people out here actually doing the service. They never say, hey, man, we love what these drivers are out there doing. What up, Mike? We love what these drivers are out there doing. We love what the drivers are doing for the They never say that shit. They love the app. They love the app. The app is great. The app is, is successful. The app is amazing. But what about the people that are actually out there doing the work? We're actually there doing the service. I mean, all holiday season, Thanksgiving, you know, Christmas coming up, New Year's. What about the drivers, man? What about the drivers? Sound a little staticky? Is, this, is it better back here? Because I know sometimes, man, it, it, this thing starts picking up, you know, different. It was sounding funny earlier, too. Thanks, Brad. Hey, man, I'll be trying, man, because nobody ever talks about the drivers and what the drivers are actually doing for this economy. Everybody loves the brand. Everybody loves the product. Everybody loves the app, loves the technology. But drivers, we're the ones actually making this work because without us, what do you have? The technology is nothing without us doing the footwork. And because we're doing the footwork, all we saying is we deserve a fair shot of the money. Funny because Uber sent me a message the other day saying, make sure you drive this holiday season and get your piece of the pie. That's what it said in the thing. Get your piece of the pie. And I'm like, my piece of the pie is like, you know, 30, 40 <laughs> percent. Yeah, I think it is. YouTube's made, all the ATMs are down even at the registers. It might have something to do with that. Yeah, man, it's something crazy because YouTube was spinning earlier. And then when I was trying to do my live and it said, try again. Never has it said that. Then the microphone wouldn't have no sound to it. It was all screwed up. Something was jacked. I'm like, something's up with the internet today, man. Something's up. 
Yeah, I don't know what it is. It like I said, it's something that's happening with the internet. It's like it's lagging or something. I don't know. Is it better if I talk up closer or is it sound better farther back? Luckily, this is going to be a short live. I hate popping mics, man. I hate that because some people listen with earbuds in and you don't want it to be popping and everything. So this is turbulence, turbulence, <laughs> man. Yeah, this is a hell no, not close. Yeah, but like I said, man, these drivers out here. If, if we're not getting a fair shot of the money, if we ain't getting a fair shot of the money, what is the point? What is the point of us investing all this money into the equipment to be able to do this job? I mean, we're part of the infrastructure of ride share. When you talk about ride share, you're talking about sharing your car with somebody, purchasing the car, keeping it clean, maintaining it, but still having to make money to go home to your family. We still got to make money to go home. We still got to pay for rent, mortgage, pay for the car we're using, pay for fuel, food. And if we're not getting enough to do that, what is the point of ride share? What is the point of it? I mean, you got to get down to brass tacks and be like, what's the point of us doing this if you guys as a corporation are, are taking all the money from us and, and not putting nothing back into the economy? You're not putting nothing back into the economy of where we live. You're charging all these riders, gouging everybody, just gouging people. All right, cool. Better farther back. All right, bet, bet. And it's too many, you know... Is, is when the government says like, you know, during like natural disasters and stuff like that, when Uber tries to gouge riders, the government would step in and say, hey, you can't do that. The government steps in. But see, all during the year, we see it all during the year, not just during natural disasters. We see it all during the year. Charging riders, twenty eight dollars, charging riders, thirty four dollars. Yet we're getting like thirteen dollars out of that. Man, I'm like, do I? we can't do that. We can't do that. Because $13 to go like 16, 17 miles, I mean, you're making like $19 an hour. You're making about $19 an hour in your own vehicle that you have to pay for using your fuel in the neighborhood you live in, having to pay rent or mortgage where you are, then having to pay for food for the kids and for yourself in your house. We are part of the business. We are the business. And that's why, I, like I said... I'm going to wear this shirt everywhere. Y'all can screenshot this motherfucker, like share it all over social media and let people know, especially the riders know. We're you guys are going through a, a period of corporate theft, a corporate gouging right now. We're going through a whole changing of the guard when it comes to the economy. So I'm sitting here looking at how they're taking people's savings, not caring about riders' money. They don't care that they're charging somebody $45 ride. They don't care to charge somebody $45 for that ride, but only giving the, the actual driver $19. They don't care. They will gouge. Yeah, it's the great reset. That's what it is, the great reset. They're taking all the economy out of people's bank accounts. Time to wake up. They taking all the money out of the economy, not putting nothing back in and expecting people to be okay with constantly using ride share. I mean, this is our career. We're doing this for the long haul. We're saying, you know, what? I want to be a driver for four years, five years, 10 years, whatever. We're trying to be that. <laughs> See, something's definitely up with that mic. You sound like Dr. Dre, man. See, what up, Dre? <laughs> no. Thanks, brother. Thanks. I don't know. Like I said, it, it's the internet today. Something was even wrong with me trying to get on. Something's up. What up, Crazy K? So... You know, if, if we can't keep riders willing to pay for the rides, just willing to pay for them, then how are we going to sit up there and, and maintain a career? Because at some point, people are going to just stop using ride share. They're going to say, dude, I can't keep up with the expense of ride share. I can't keep up with this expense. It, it's costing me, you know, $25 to get to work, $45 home. I'm paying $70 a day, $70 a day just for ride share. When really there's a driver out there that might only charge you $30, $40 a day for that. You're losing $30 a day. Every 10 days is $300 out of your pocket. It's the great reset. It's the great reset. Yeah, exactly. And it's like the drivers who owe 50, 60 K on those SUVs right now, having to do with ride share right now, it was, it was so much better back in the day. So much better back in the day because you had the big quests that were helping drivers out. You had the, the better percentage of us getting a fare. You had riders not paying so much for a fare that they actually left a tip. I had the message like I my last two reservations at the airport that were on Uber. I didn't get any tip with those reservations. So I was like, 
something's up thanks robert reese i appreciate that brother hey this is hot off the press man you had that that didn't steal tips yeah so i sat there and i'm looking up like man this is what it says uber and lyft steals fares and tips yeah and i'm gonna tell you right now man i messaged support asking them how come damn near 100% of the time I drop somebody off at the airport on my reservations, almost 100% of the time, I get a tip. I get a, the last two reservations I did yesterday and then yesterday morning. No tip at all. None. So I messaged the port. I said, is there something wrong with the tipping system? Should we be using Cash App or Venmo? What's going on with the tipping system? Because I never did reservations back to back, back to back. Never got tips. And this is reservations. Almost 100% of the time I get reserv I get tip. The only time I didn't get a reservation, I remember I picked up a college kid early in the morning and dropped them off. I get it. College kids don't tip. But these two people were not college kids. They were adults. And on reservations, almost 100% of the time, I'm going to get tips. So I'm like, man, it's something going on with these apps. Something is going on with these apps. So we need to keep word out there. Like I said, man, let these riders know. Let these drivers know. In the rideshare community, it's all of us, man. It's all of us, riders and drivers both. And we got to state the obvious, state the facts. There's not enough people talking about it. Yeah, they paid the $328 million settlement. That was only in New York City. Everybody talked about it for two and three days, and it dropped off. But I'm telling you, it just wasn't in New York. It's everywhere. I think the theft is rampant. I think the corporate theft and the corporate gouging is rampant. Nobody's talking about it. Stephanie from Denver on that one video, she was discussing it, talking about how they're taking all the money and they're running off with billions and billions of dollars of the economy and they're overcharging people. So somebody's actually noticing it and talking about it. But we don't have enough people hammering it down. We got to stay on. Like I said, I made this shirt. I'm going to wear this shirt around. I'm going to wear this shirt. Probably just walk around with it in Walmart, driving people around. I'm going to wear it when I'm driving ride share to let people know when they say when I get out the airport, getting people luggage, this is what they're going to see. Uber and Lyft steals fares and tips. They're going to see it because it's true. You want to know the truth? This is the truth. This is why drivers are upset. This is why you're getting declined all the time. This is why you're getting canceled on all the time. This is why. Yeah, man. Oh, thanks. Time to wake up. Hey, I, I let people know, man. It's, it's we got to let people know the truth about what's going on in ride share. There's too many channels out there are scared to talk about the truth. They call it drama. Oh, it is drama. It's drama to see somebody's couch out on the curb because they got evicted. It's drama to see somebody not be able to afford groceries. To me, that's the drama we should be talking about. You want to talk about drama, and that's drama. But so many people are scared of these apps. We can't be scared of these apps. This is our livelihood. This is how we make money. They're taking money from riders who can't even afford these rides, but they're desperate. They got to get to work. They got to get home. And they're scratching their head like, man, I can't afford these damn Ubers. Let them know you do have a chance. Talk. Talk to one of these drivers. Say, hey, man, I know this shit is probably hitting you over the head, man. We paid $129 to leave this concert, man, 129 It ain't got to be like that. It ain't got to be like that. More drivers and riders should be talking. And this is what they should be talking about, what the court system has already found. What investigations is already found? Talk about it because corporate theft is rampant. All of this, this gouging is rampant. And if we stop talking about it, they're going to keep doing it. We need to bring it up to legislature. Talk about it in your city, in your state. Because if it happened to New York, trust me, that ain't the only place it happened. There's a lot of money they owe to a lot of drivers right now. A lot of money they owe to a lot of drivers. And people want to sit there and pretend that the most important thing on the app right now is, is the fact that they're going to take a picture and show you where the delivery is dropping off at. No, I want my money. I want my money. Yeah, we need to end it. It has to stop, man. And the only way it's going to stop is if we get out there and we keep talking about it. We keep hammering on it. We let rioters know about it. We don't be afraid. Because Lyft, I remember, probably, I don't know, three, four months ago, it was right before the summer hit. I, was, I did a video. I was picking up a rider, and the rider got in my back seat and told me. He told me. Yeah, Lyft sent me a message saying that we're not to discuss, you know, the transaction with a driver and we can report a driver, you know, if they discuss the transaction with us because they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. If this is an upfront business, this is a transparent business. This is where everybody is supposed to win. Riders are partners of the app. Right? I mean, drivers are partners with the app. If we're true partners of the app, then let's go out and do it. Then let's do it together. Let's pick these people up together. Let's make ride share happen together. The reason why they're hiding information is because they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. 
And I'm sitting here thinking, what is this? Uh, do allow American born drivers on their platform Z trip? Do they allow American born drivers on their platform? I don't even know. I ain't never heard of Z trip. <laughs> Marcus, I need a shirt, brother. Hey, if you look in all the descriptions of all my videos, you'll see the shirt website on there. I, I didn't put this one on there because I just made this one this morning. I got up, ate breakfast, kicked back. This idea came to my head. I made it. Happy Thanksgiving, just. Yeah, you're right, Logan. Ride share is supposed to be con it's convenient and it's supposed to be for everybody. The drivers are supposed to be happy to go pick up somebody because the drivers know, hey, this is worth my time. This is worth my fuel. It's worth my $60,000 car. It's worth it. But then when you get lifts in, we don't care if your car is $60,000. We're not going to allow you to use it on a luxury platform. We're going to just make you pick up regular people for $3 from Taco Bell. And what happens? Lyft definitely can't be making no money right now. I don't care what nobody says, especially them lying ass people. They sitting there saying that they're making, you know, record gross revenue. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're fudging. They're cooking the books, fudging the numbers, because there's no way with everybody's declines going through the roof right now, they're making more money. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. And I'm sitting there looking at all of all the people who are waking up to the fact that we're independent contractors and that we can decline this shit. So many people are waking up to it now and doing it. These apps know they don't have a foot in the race right now. Because if we, we're all the ones with the vehicles, if we said we're not picking up nothing unless it's worth my time and my money, no more lowball. And no man, these apps, gonna, they're going to implode. And that's why I think Uber's trying to sell that billion dollar bond right now they're trying to sell a billion dollar bond right now hey ezra uh always in, in the description of all my videos i heard i put the links and everything in there that way i ain't got to type it on a thing so all my videos all my live streams i hear you put my links in there i hand type everything so i don't copy and paste nothing i hand type everything in my descriptions to make sure people know what the video is about anything like my email address shirt website i put that in there real quick just to make sure, you know, if they go, oh, shit, just look at the description of the video. You're like, oh, shit, there it is right there. Damn. All the information I'm looking for is right here. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm already working with Miami, the mayor, to fix Uber in South Florida. Good, JJ. Good. Good. And that's what we need to do, man. Get government involved. Talk to the mayors. Talk to the governments. Let them know this is what's going on. Without audits. Like I said, we're independent contractors without the power to audit transactions. They do not give us the power to audit a transaction. And because of that, they know they can easily siphon money off the top. They can easily say, hey, man, a tip came through, but we ain't going to give him that tip. He doesn't even know that tip came through. That tip came through three hours later. He has no idea. Keep it. Ten dollar tip came through. Keep it. Give him a dollar. Give him two dollars. Give him three. He don't know. He'll never contact that rider again. We don't have the power to audit, and they know we don't have the power to audit. And this is how they're getting away with the theft. Like I said, New York audit. And it was what they said from 2014 to 17 was the only period. 2014 to 17 was the period that they did that audit for to find out, you know, it was millions of dollars. So they said, we'll agree to $328 million. We'll pay back $328 million. No one was probably way more. That was probably a third of what they took. Probably a third. Thanks, Dalton. Man, this is it, man. This is it. And we got to live this message, man, because I'm tired of people only talking about things when the news talks about it. We live this every day. We live dealing with our affairs being lower than what they should have been. We live with our tips not coming through. We live with this every day. So we got to wear this every day. We know what's going on every day. And until somebody investigates, it's like JJ's talking to his mayor. We need to start talking to our mayors, our governors, saying, hey, and if you look right now in Hong Kong right now, the taxi drivers over in Hong Kong are pissed. They're pissed. The taxi drivers in Hong Kong are fighting against allowing Uber to come into that region because they don't want Uber there. They know what Uber is doing. Uber is exploiting people. Uber is underpaying drivers. Why ain't the taxi drivers happy? Why ain't they happy? Because they know what Uber is doing. Uber is a corporate cancer. Lyft is a corporate cancer. They come in. They exploit anybody with a vehicle, not paying them. They they take all the money from any rider that wants a ride. They're going to gouge that rider. Hey. 3824 for this ride. You can get this nice ride for $38. So the person pays $38 thinking the ride costs $38. Driver get $12. Like, wait a minute, how's the driver gonna get $12 for 18 miles? You're gonna get this driver $12 for 18 miles. You just charge this person $38. They're gouging people. They're gouging people. That's right, invisible. Spread the word, man. Spread the word.
because even in Hong Kong, like I said, you can look it up. They're over there fighting right now. The taxi drivers are like, we don't want Uber over here. We know how Uber comes in. They become a cancer to the community. They start gouging all the, the economy out of the community. They start taking money from all these people that need rides. So and then instead of reinvesting back into the community through giving the drivers money, they just run off with the money. They just run off. with. They don't pay the drivers nothing. It's like they come in, cut everything down, then cut bait. Then they get out of there. So a lot of people all over the world, it's not just us here in America, people all over the world, Hong Kong, they're noticing what Uber's doing. They noticing what Lyft is doing. So we're not, we may be the 300 over here. We might be, you know, a small ass crew over here on this channel. We small, but we speak loud and we speak in unison with everybody else who's noticing what's going on with these apps, with these corporations. It ain't just an app. It's a corporation and it's got, you know, greedy elites, people like Warren Buffett. Oh, I love the Uber brand. Uber's a great brand. I love that brand. Motherfucker never said nothing about the drivers. You don't love the drivers? No, fuck the drivers. We love the brand. This is I checked the Uber app and they're charging $60 for UberX and no surge on the map. I turned it off and came home. Yeah, man. That's what I'm saying, Stanley. This gouging. Like I said, on the back of my shirt, like this. That's what we need to do. Stop the theft. In the theft and the gouging, end it. In the theft and the gouging. Anytime you do something out there, hashtag e tag. That's what you do. Hashtag e tag. In theft and gouging. In theft and gouging. Hashtag e tag on every fucking thing. That way, when people start going, what the hell is e tag? I keep seeing hashtag e tag. Hashtag e tag. Oh, that's some that's some ride share shit. In theft and gouging. That's for the riders and for the drivers. That represents both of us, riders and drivers. We want to end the theft of our money, but stop gouging these goddamn riders. I'm protecting both of us with my statement. I'm not just speaking up for the riders. I'm speaking up for ride share altogether as an industry. When we got a cancer of theft, a cancer of corruption into our industry, this is our livelihood. This is our life. This is our life. So if we sitting there saying we want to do this for our life, we want to do this to help take care of our kids, to put our kids through college, to, you know, buy a house, to improve our property, to, you know, stay renting our apartment in a nice neighborhood for a few years. We can't do it without money. But if we keep getting our money stolen from us and they're laughing all the way to the bank. What up, Ryan? They laughing all the way to the bank, man, laughing all the way to the bank. And we sitting here like. We're the ones doing the work. We're in the streets. We're hitting the potholes. We curb checking shit. We getting door dinged. This is us out here in the streets. Are you telling me $2.63 is what you, you going to give me? No, not for two sixty three dollars in these streets. And you just charge this person $16 for the ride. $16. Look at Stanley. Stanley said motherfucker charge $60 for a ride and it ain't even surging yet. Yeah, we need to strike with them shirts, man. <laughs> Hey, I told I'm wearing this motherfucker all day today. I made it this morning. I'm gonna wear this shit all day. I gotta go to the airport, cruise around. Oh, trust me. I got something to say and I'm gonna wear it. I got something to say. So as I'm walking around cruising, people gonna say Uber and Lyft. Oh, yeah. They're gonna look at that and go, oh shit. So they do steal fares and tips. Motherfucker, I'm a driver. I know. I know. I'm a driver. I know how much these people are paying when they get into the car. Talking about some man, it's expensive today, man. Why is it so expensive? $42 for a ride. I'm getting $21 out of the $42. I'm like, hold up for a second, man. You paid $42 for this ride? Yeah. Crazy shit, man. Cra yeah, exactly. Hand in your pocket. And like with all of these new riders coming on deck right now that don't know the value of money, don't know the value of the American dollar. They're the ones who are who are being the, the most exploited out of all of us. They're trying to make us desperate. The, the, the experienced drivers, they want to make us desperate. And then the ones who don't know anything, they're just going to exploit them. They're going to keep them desperate, keep them driving for the pennies on a dollar. Man, it was it was uh, Uber Eats orders coming through my phone last night. Three dollars for twenty nine minutes. Three dollars for twenty nine minutes. I'm looking at these orders. I'm like, man, you out your damn. I ain't no way in hell. I'm going to go do an Uber Eats order middle of the damn night, midnight for three dollars. Going to take me twenty nine minutes. It'd be like eleven miles. I'm like, she doubt it. Doubt it. <laughs> There you go, Joe. There you go, Joe. I just added Venmo and Cash App to, to my Lux Black. Real shit, man. That's what you got to do, Joe. This is the time to get your money. Because we know out there, we're doing the work. We got, we got the rubber on the road, man. We out there putting in some work right now. We deserve the money. When somebody wants to pay for a ride, we're the ones who going to ride. 
they're not riding on the phone. They're not riding on the app. No, they're using the app to locate us. Where's is, where's is this car? Oh, this car right around the corner. So you're going to pay that car $16 to take somebody somewhere, but charge that guy almost $40. That shit ain't right. That's gouging. That's gouging. And the government needs to step in. The government needs to say the value of these rides should be what these rides are. There is no such thing as a service fee. Just for clicking a button on an app, it's costing you $40 to hit a button. It's costing you $40 because the ride is actually $16 to $20. And that's why I think these apps are, are okay with stealing our tips because they'll say, well, the upfront fare was $18. We know the guy tipped $5 to make it $23, but you agreed to $18. You was okay with $18. So they keep our tips. They're keeping them. And I'm like, if somebody says, hey, man, thanks for the ride. I get 18 and they tip me $5 on top of it. I should get my $5 too. Why am I not getting my $5? Oh, well, you agreed to 18. It don't make a difference what I agreed to. This person tipped me extra on, on that ride. I deserve that tip. But you don't ever see that. You don't ever see that. Record profits off the record gouging. Yeah, man, it's crazy, crazy. Stanley Jenkins, thank you for the super chat, brother. My brother right there. Hey, he said, uh, have you noticed no good bonuses or boosts on holiday weeks? It happens every holiday in Memphis. Yep, because they got people desperate out here. Because what they're going to do, Stanley, just like what Stanley said, they're about to gouge right now. They're, they got people believing there's no drivers out there. They got people believing that, you know, it's a it's a busy, busy season. So they got to pay all this money, $30, $40 for a ride they used to be paying like $15, $20 for. But yeah, there's probably three or four drivers in the area. Somebody just sent me something. I gotta, I'm gonna do it on my one of my next videos. But it shows him on the passenger app and him on the rider app in his car, sitting right where he is. And the passenger app does not show his car. The passenger app does not show he's sitting right there. I don't know who sent me that. I gotta go back through my Gmail and find it. But I want to put that because this is what they're they're doing. They're shadow banning our cars off of the passenger app. So it doesn't look like we're there. It looks like there's no driver in the area. When he clearly, he was on his own phone, own phone. He said, dude, look at my passenger app, my rider. You see me on the driver app. I'm sitting right there on the driver app, but I'm nowhere to be found on the passenger side. They're doing that shit, man. They're doing it. What up, Devin? What up, Devin? Man, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to make these shirts. I got to go uh, pick up some more white vinyl. I got to go buy because I think I ran out. I'm real close to running out, so I got to go buy more. <laughs> I've been making a few shirts here and there, getting them out the door. What up, Will? What up, Will? Yeah, Logan, man. And, and this is what they're doing, man. They're, they're letting people think that there's no drivers in the area. There's no drivers in the region to justify why they're charging so much when there's probably three, four drivers sitting right around the corner. Oh, it's a shortage of drivers right now. We're going to have to charge you $40 and try to locate one. Give us a minute. We'll try to find one. Dude sitting right around the corner. It's like, man, man, man. This Uber won't send you a trip if you're the rider and the driver. But why wouldn't it show a car on the on the path? Because on the rider, on the driver app, it showed his car. But on the driver's side, I think he said it was using his wife's account. That's why I got to pull up. I need to pull up on his phone. I mean, on the email, what he exactly said, because I think he was using his wife's account as the rider, but he was using his own account as the driver. He wasn't logged into both of them at the same time. He was just at his house using a passenger app while he was using a rider app. I think he was on his wife's phone. So but let me get the email. Like I said, I'm going to put it on my next video to kind of to get down what it is, because you're probably right. They probably don't allow a rider and a driver himself to request his own trip. I don't see that happening. Which is why I think he was using his wife's account when he was using his own account as a driver. But we'll we'll get it out there. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. JTB, what's good, my man? Fraud machine. Joe said, it shows my car when I look. When you're on the uh, passenger side and the rider side, it should show both of them, Joe. And that's what I'm saying. If, if, Joe, if you're saying if you're using your rider account right now and you got your driver account running right now and you saying it shows your car on both phones, I don't know. Maybe it does because I know on his, like I said, I need to get his email to know which account he was using when he was showing because he had one account that was passenger, one was driver, and it didn't show his ride on the on the uh, passenger side. So, yeah, man, man. Yeah, I know, Driven Dad. It's, it's been like that, man. I don't know what the deal is. Today, like I said, I was trying to get online earlier today 
and it was just spinning and it had me retry robert reese said there's something wrong with the atms in stores and everything's all like choked up right now i don't know what the deal is with with the internet today maybe the bandwidth is just really small around holidays <laughs> so many people trying to get flights and rides and text messaging and everybody's off work traveling everywhere the whole internet system is kind of screwing up right now skynet yeah exactly. <laughs> that's what it is skynet man yeah, Logan, man, when they had that live, they could have asked all of these questions. They could have had them all. But I'm like, say, maybe the headphones, this seems just to be when you move. I don't know. Could it be this? Let me move this out the way. That was my phone right there. I'm going to sit my phone over here. It could have been the phone. Does it sound any different now? Let me see something. Does it sound any different now? I just sound really loud. I need those earphones to muffle me down. Yeah, new, yeah, YouTube has been bugging, man. It's been bugging. So I don't know what the deal is, man. It's like earlier today I was trying to get on. Said, so now it sounds a lot better now? I don't know. It could be something just like crackling and screwing and moving around. Who knows? Who knows, man? What do you say? It's the headphones. Joe said, it's the headphones. That's what it was the whole time. Now it's good. Okay, I don't get it, man. See, now it's still a crackle. Still a crackle. <laughs> hold up does that make it any different right there i just took the headphones completely out does that make it any different absolutely absolutely i just took the headphone connections out forget it because like i said it was something wrong it was something wrong earlier man because it was like so now it's perfect now it's better snap still snap crackling in the pop <laughs> Dude, I don't know what it is, man. The traveling man said, Paw Patrol in full effect? Yeah. It's something wrong with it, man. Whatever, whatever. Like I said, it was it was all earlier. It just kept spinning, spinning, spinning. Like it wouldn't allow me to, to get on. So I had to go back out and come back in. Whatever, man. Yeah. This, like I said, luckily this is going to be one of the shorter lives. Because I hate when people listen with headsets on and there's a crackle in it. Because that would irritate the hell out of me. It... So it's a little bit better now that I'm unplugged. All right, bet, bet. Thank you, Stan Jenkins, my man right there. Stanley Jenkins Motorsport. Roll on with the stream. Not a biggie, not a biggie. <laughs> but, hey, like I was saying, man, I'm I'm glad you guys are helping me with the sounds and all that because I hate it. I'm like OCD with that shit. I hate crackling. Just hate it. Because I'll be like, oh, man, this shit's because it, it doesn't sound like good to me or whatever. You good, Tony, man. You good. But that's what I'm saying, man. We need to. This is the message we need to keep out there for riders to see, because a lot of riders have no idea. They have no idea. I mean, it's so funny. Even Dara. Remember when Dara did that interview and the news guy was like, yeah, man, I paid so much money to get here. Dara was like, really? Fifty two dollars. No. Yeah. Fifty two dollars for that ride. No, it must be inflation or it must be surging or he was like throwing out. Wow. No, it must be your people are stealing. Maybe your people are just stealing from these riders, gouging all these riders. That's really what it is. Thanks, Stephen. I appreciate that. Stephen Bowman, my man. And I, if we don't get out there, man, this week and make some good money, hopefully everybody's starting to get their cards put up, man. I'm driving. I'm driving. So hopefully everybody get their cards put together, get their Vista print cards, talk to customers, you know, try to come up with a list. Try to come up with a list of people that you especially people that party a lot you know they go out a lot and put them on a group text man put them on a group text and say hey man i'll be out driving the night until like 4 a.m if you guys need a ride hit me up man i just bought a shirt not even sure what what it was but i support your mission thanks ezra i appreciate that bro. <laughs> he said not even sure what it was i'm gonna have to put your name on the sleeve or something like that brother that's all you yep time to wake up you right passenger being charged 30 dollars, but the driver's getting seven dollars this is gouging. It's gouging. And the government has to step in. Somebody's got to step in and say, listen, there's something going on in the economy right now to where there's no regulations over ride share. It's almost like crypto when everybody was doing crazy stuff with crypto and rug pulls and all that stuff. That's kind of like what ride share is turning into. It's like a free for all. These apps are just saying, hey, just throw charges out there. See what sticks. Throw charges out there. So they'll throw a ton of charges out there. People are paying, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars for these rides where the driver's only getting 15 dollars. And then as the night goes on, they start bringing the fares down a little bit. And it's like they're skimming. They're selling the same service at an expensive amount. 
to see who bites. And I'm like, that. there has to be something illegal with that, man. There has to be something illegal with that. Because we can see if we as a driver was getting a, a big chunk of money because it was traffic was heavier or the opportunity cost of us taking this ride and not another ride was there. But we're getting paid the same low amount. We're getting the same low amount. So they can't justify why this driver is not getting paid what this rider is paying. They can't even justify it. It's gouging, man. It's gouging. And we know that these people at these apps, all these staffs at these apps and everything, what are they? They're employees. And they're told you got to make so much revenue. If you don't make this much revenue and hit your revenue marks, people are going to get fired. We got to hit these revenue marks or people are going to get fired. So they're charging people, not paying drivers, so they can hit their revenue and profit marks because they're getting bonuses on that money. They get bonuses on what we should be getting paid for. Yeah, NFTs, exactly, exactly. This is just what it is, like NFTs, man. It's like Roger is a giant rug pull. <laughs> That's all this is, is, a giant rug pull. And I'm sitting here going... You know, if if all these people are getting these revenue bonuses for the regions that they're overcharging customers in and underpaying drivers in, we should know that as a business structure. If we're business partners, we should know that because these people at home sitting on their laptops playing and shit like that, playing on this ride share app when we are in these streets driving. And they're upset at us because we're making more than them, but we're also the ones buying the expensive cars. We're the ones having to deal with all the car repairs all the time. We got to do it all. Like you said, the high insurance. We got high insurance. We got deductibles we got to pay for. But yet they're like, oh, well, you guys shouldn't be paid more than like 17 an hour. Motherfucker, we're not employees. We are not employees. We're business people out here. We're contractors out here. We got business equipment we're buying. Some of us got two cars we got to use for it just in case one breaks down. We're not employees. And so I don't even like it when W-2 people trying to bring over that W-2 mentality, acting like we're employed. Well, you know, this is no, we're businesses, dog. This is different. This is a business. This is not we're not hired. We're allowed to be on this app, on this platform to get people around. But even though we're allowed to do that, we shouldn't be exploited. I mean, it's true. They're exploiting people. The like DJ Envy asked the driver the other day, was Uber taking 40 percent? He said, no, we get all the money. They what they put on the screen. I'm like this dumbass. <laughs> that's funny shit. That's funny shit. The dr that's how that's how inexperienced these drivers are, dog. That's how inexperienced they are. They think what they see on the screen is what the rider paid. It's like, no, what you see on the screen is what you've been offered. And we damn well know that that's a low ass offered. So we do say, no, nah, we get 100% of what they put on the screen. Motherfucker, you should have asked DJ Amber, well, what did you pay? What did you pay? Oh, I paid $72 for this ride. Oh, shit. I'm only getting $36. You paid $72? Damn. I'm only getting 36 bucks. And that's what the thing. We're the ones we got to fight through this traffic. We've got to fight through all of the, the car repairs. We've got to fight through logistics of being stuck on some side of town, working our way back through traffic, through construction, through all of this. And these people just sitting on their damn laptops going, oh, man, I'm making a killing off these riders today. I'm making a killing off these riders. But yet, as drivers, we ain't making a killing on shit. We're being paid way less. Sky high rock. It's like these fares are sky high right now. Record fares right now. But look at our pay structure. It's the lowest it's probably ever been. And people have been driving for a while know that it's the lowest it's probably ever been. That's right, King James. We're not hired. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, employees are hired. We're not hired. We're allowed to participate in the app based on the equipment we purchased, based on our background. We're allowed to be on this app, on this platform. But even with that, if we decide to just say, you know what? The app is the app charge you 182 to leave this concert. And it's only like, you know, 50 miles. You pay me $100 and we'll be good. I mean, the app is not going to make any money because we're the ones actually providing the service. The app ain't making a dime. The apps will be like, why are these people never taking these rides no more? They're showing up at these spots and the customers are seeing that they're getting better offers from the drivers themselves. Because we should have a right to negotiate with this rider. We should have a right to negotiate a price with this rider. If you showing up, you getting in my car, sitting behind me. I don't know you. You don't know me. You got four people standing on a curb. I don't want to take all four of y'all for $12 when you telling me y'all just paid $42 for this ride. I'm only getting $12 out of this $42. I should have a right to say, you know what? Nah, I don't want this ride. I don't. 
not for four people because I didn't know it was four people when I showed up anyways. So I show up as four people standing on the curb right here and you telling me $14 to pretty much damage my car. I got holes and shit in my floors back there now. My mats got holes in the back. And I'm sitting there like, we've got to keep buying it because if somebody was to get in my car and I got raggedy ass fucking floors, carpet flying everywhere, like goddamn uh, cotton balls and shit and foam flying. Everywhere. They'd be like, dude, why is your car all torn up like this? Because Uber ain't paying me shit to fix this. They don't pay me enough to keep fixing this shit. I can't keep buying new floor mats all the time. They don't pay me enough. So now I got some cheap shit back there that just flutters in the wind all the fucking time. <laughs> I'll be making 180K in private rides. Real shit, Tony. Real shit. Uber paid me $28 for 14 miles and the passengers paid $69 to get on that 70 bucks. I was like, I'm done with airport rides. Slow night, I wanted to leave the airport, but they damn took all my money. Yeah, J King James, they do that shit all the time. And I be seeing all the airports, all the airports, like I was downtown last night, all the air, the flights were coming in. Airport rides was booming. All you see, all cars in the queue. I took none of them, zero, zero. And I'm like, nope, not doing it because I knew what the game was, man. This is a holiday. We should be getting holiday pay. We should be getting holiday pay. Any of these W 2 people ever go to work on a holiday, they would get holiday pay. How are drivers working holiday season? We should be, you know, with our families, we should be grocery shopping, we should be cooking turkeys and dressing and shit. We should be doing that, but we choose to go help people get to and from. And not only are we lowly paid, lowly paid, then our tips get stolen, our fare gets reduced, and they make tons of money on our backs. We out here for the holiday. They taking money off of our back. And I'm like, dude, this, this shit can't be like that, man. It can't be like that. This is not, this is not le like legit business. This is a hustle. We're getting hustled as drivers. We're getting hustled as drivers. Yeah, Chris, it's been slow out there, man. Oh, yeah, Dalton, you're right. You're right. The largest shareholders know just how much the little guys are hurting. What do you think they're thinking? Never let disaster go to waste. There are more drivers who can't afford to live. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Propping them off of desperation. And that's how you exploit people, man. And there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people out there that realize the exploitation is going on. They see it loud as day, clear as day. And the government sees it. Guaranteed. Any other person out there, any other corporation exploited people to this degree exploited they call it slave labor they call it sweatshops they'd be like oh this is a, a human rights violation this is you know human rights violations they're over there got people working you know 40 50 hours you know in two or three days straight and they're not getting any breaks they're not getting any water and meals they're not getting any sleep this is a human rights violation but yet roger do that shit all the time they do it all the time phoenix has been very slow over saturation low pay no surge I don't think a lot of people are going to going out drinking and eating anymore. Well, Joe, that's the thing. The ride share apps are taking the economy out of our neighborhoods, man. A lot of the people who are used to going out, doing shit, having fun and everything else, they can't afford to. They can't afford to. Because how many times are you going to have to pay, you know, $60 ride to get home, $45 ride to get home? It's costing them more to get home to and from. And the driver, what are we getting as a driver? $21, $14. That's all we're getting. We're not getting what they're paying. We're getting, you know, 30 to 40 percent of what they're paying. And these people really think they're paying that much to get a ride home. No, you're not paying. You're paying that much to use an app. If you need a ride home, holler at me. I'm sitting right here. They see all these drivers lined up down the street. Ain't nobody walking down the street talking to a driver. Nobody. It's like they scared of people. You scared of a driver until the app says, hey, he'll take you home. Oh, I'm not scared of you now. It's like, motherfucker, walk up. You got a business card? Yeah, take a picture of it. Shh, take a picture of a business card. You can text it to your friend. Hey, this driver right here said he's going to take us home. This is his phone number. This is what his car looked like. This is his license plate. I don't give a shit. Take a picture of my car. Send it to your friends. Hey, this driver's talking about he's going to take us home for, you know, 100 bucks. They're charging us, you know, almost $300 to do this. He's going to charge us 100 bucks. Yeah, they spend more on rides than they are partying, man. It's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. And if you got to let somebody know I'm the one who's taking you home, I don't care. Shit. On the app, you got all my information. You could take a picture of my, my damn license plate. Take a picture of me. Take a picture of my car. I could care less. But if you tell me you're going to give me $40 to take you, you know, 10 miles down the road, let's go. Shit, let's go. You see, I'm a driver. 
You see my app running. If you want to take a picture of my app on my screen, knock yourself out. Whatever makes you feel better as a rider. Because we already know a lot of these people out there who are getting these rides can't afford these rides. They can't afford them. Happy Thanksgiving, Solomon. They're going to work, working at these W-2 jobs. They're, they're barely living check to check and everything else. And now they're finally going to try to get there. And they're like, dude, I can't keep paying $25 to get to work every day. It used to cost me $14 to get to work, man. It cost me $14 to get to work. Now it's like $25 every time I turn this damn app on. Hey, get me. Get me. This is bot world. <laughs> no telling, man. No telling. The bot world is coming up. I drive Lux Black, and I can only imagine most of my riders are paying 60 plus 120 both ways. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. ABC says, hey, man, where you getting those fresh T-shirts from, man? Oh, man, it's this dude. It's this homeless dude around the corner be making these shirts. What I do is I always give him some, uh, I give him Taco Bell. I give his ass two or three of them dusty-ass tacos, and he hooked me up with some shirts, man, homeless dude. He be making them right on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm fucking with you. If you look at my description, you'll see a t-shirt website. <laughs> it's a t-shirt site on there. And that's where I be making all my, like, I just come up with ideas because when you do this shit and you live this shit and you rock with the drivers because you are driving, you out there doing this, you feel the customers and the riders out there because you talk to them, you feel a pain and everything. Just the vibe and the energy of shit just happens like that, man. Cause I was like, for real, <laughs> it's like Dave Chappelle for real. It, it was like a homeless dude making them shirts. So they're here in Vegas, under, undercover, trying to catch drivers to listen in cash rides, Nevada, Transportation Authority, trying to set people up in trapping also by begging for cash ride with a big tip. Dalton, I know they're trying to do that shit, man, because the government right now is in bed with Uber and Lyft. I believe that shit. I believe that. The government, ha they're paying a lot of people. Uber and Lyft are paying a lot of people in the government industry through campaigns, through donations through bribes to make sure that we don't get money because if we had if we were out there getting money they, they wouldn't be able to control us governments love to control people they control people by keeping a thumb on top of them if we out there making money and we doing well and we you know helping our own economy out they don't control the economy what up adolphus my brother they don't control the economy dalton they don't once we start showing how we control the economy they get scared now they want to threaten us all. We're going to take you to jail. We're going to find you. We're going to do this and do that. Oh, time to wake up. I get it, brother. I get it. Going out there, brother. Going out there, man. Get it. Like I said, I'll be online for another 20, 30 minutes, and that's it, man. I got to go pick up my people, too. Let me see something. Let me go down. I got to. That's my man right there. I got to add my man Adolphus. I was going to get him yesterday. Forgot to add him. Yeah. And that's the thing. Once they realize that that we're the ones creating the economy. We're the ones making the money wherever we go. Because if it ain't no drivers there, there ain't no economy there. So you can have an app. You can download an app anywhere you got Wi-Fi. That's cool. Download an app. But if ain't no cars, there ain't no drivers there. You ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. I know fortune time flies, man. <laughs> the government is paying Uber and Lyft to not pay us. The government, we see we making too much money. Yeah. Reason I said that when the pandemic was going, the government gave all these millions of dollars to bail out Uber and Lyft. All these millions of dollars to be saying, hey, man, we're going to give you all this money, you know, kind of take care of your drivers. Now, with all that money going back and forth, transferring hands and everybody's got all this money going back and forth. There's no audit trail for any of this. It's perfect for money laundering, perfect for money laundering. Because you can say, hey, man, we got all these extra millions of dollars laying around and nobody knows about it. We don't allow the drivers to audit us. The government officials are like, we know you guys don't get audited. We know you don't get audited. So I tell you what, we won't audit you if you kick us back with something. You kick some of that money back to, you know, my cousin over here, you kick some money over. And that's how it happens, man. Governments and, and these apps become in bed with each other. And every time the, the we, the riders, have a problem... You don't see no government official coming to our aid. Stephanie over in, uh, you know, Denver's coming to somebody's aid. But you see how the United Auto Workers, that huge legion of United Auto Workers, they talking about, yeah, Joe Biden's coming to speak to the United Auto Workers. This whole coalition of, of angry Americans upset at corporate, you know, America being too greedy with the United Auto Workers. 
How can we can't be united ride share workers? How can we just can't unite and have somebody in government come say, hey, why are you guys so upset? What's going on? Well, these apps are stealing money. They're robbing these people, stealing money, not giving us our tips and everything. You guys keep catching them. You guys keep finding them all the time. But you guys never do nothing to prohibit it or to open up the, the transparency. You're never doing anything like that. So you got United Auto Workers, you got teachers unions all over the country, you got railroad workers unions, you got airline stewardess and pilot unions everywhere else. When it comes to ride share drivers, we're the last on the totem pole. We're not thought about as being a, coll a collaborative people. We're not a collective of people. We're looked at as being tools, tools of the app. We're not looked at as being people who have families at home, people who are really out here in the streets with the potential to die. We can die doing what we do every day. Any, any of us could die any day. But we're just looked at as a tool that can be replaced. You die, that's cool. I got four other drivers behind. Don't nobody give a shit because we're independent. There ain't never a, a never a, you know, we're going to, the, the apps don't say, you know, we're going to have a moment of silence for all of the drivers who die doing ride share. We're going to have, you know, this date be National Ride Share Driver Day for all the drivers that have been harmed in ride share, all the drivers that have been molested in ride share, all the drivers that have been assaulted in ride share. We're going to have a day. To, to show respect to all the drivers of the communities out there that have been doing all of this work, doing everything. We got National Teachers Day. We got National All Kind of Fucking Days. We ain't got nothing to ever say is this a National Drivers Day for the drivers out there who's out there really putting their life on the line. Drivers that we buried. We buried drivers through car accidents, buried them through carjackings. We buried them through natural causes. National Taco Day, motherfucker. They got National Taco Day. They ain't got National Driver Day, National Rideshare Driver Day, Delivery Driver Day. Never get a thank you from Uber Eats. Never get my tips. <laughs> so that's a Tuesday shit. We all sitting here shaking our heads up and down, not in agreement, word for word, brother. All facts. The truth needs to come out. But yet, look at us, how we do the community, man. How many drunk motherfuckers have we gotten home? How many people have we gotten to the hospital? How many people have we brought from the hospital? Getting people to appointments, getting people to their medication. How many times have we have ride share drivers done that? It's a, it's a family member at work, can't get home to feed their kids. We picked these fucking McDonald's boxes up and got them to their house. How many times have we done that? How many times have we done that? We've done so much. We've gotten people from point A to point B. And not once has anybody in this whole motherfucking political system, corporate system, done said, you know what, we need to have a national ride share driver day. Because these motherfuckers really are part of the community, really doing it. They're really out here doing it, man. They're an integral part of our community. Because what of today? All the airline pilots walked the fuck off. All the airline pilots just walked off today and said, fuck it, we ain't flying no more planes. This world will have a meltdown. This whole world will have a meltdown. Because they think pilots are so important. They're part of logistics. They get me from New York to Miami. Pilots get me from Chicago to Denver. Pilots are, are fucking, yeah, the broke back passengers like, ow, those motherfuckers. <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, they've never once said, what about the drivers of this country? What about the drivers of this whole world? We've never once stopped to think about they're the most thankless fucking people ever. We never say thank you. We still lay fucking tips. We still lay fares. We got to pay $328 million fines and shit. Yeah, we worked through COVID. We did all that shit. Man, this is Jeff has great content. Sir just said Uber does 1 million an hour and 24 seven. And Russia is up 8 million from 132 mil before. And guess what, Ray? We don't get no benefit of that as drivers. We don't get shit of that as drivers. As drivers that actually make this shit happen, as the people who are making this, this ain't app shit. This is us, really us, in our cars, gassing our shit up at gas stations, two, three, four in the morning. This is us. Thankless. They steal from us, exploit us, put us down. Tell us, go get a real job. But yet, if the moment comes that everybody says, fuck it, we ain't doing ride share no more, it's going to be a lot more DUIs. Motherfuckers not making the hospitals. People not making it to work, not making it from work. People can't feed their fucking kids because they at work. I got to leave work, go home and cook for my kids, and then come back to work because they don't do deliveries no more. Ain't nobody doing deliveries no more. If that day ever comes, people say, man, ride share drivers really did make a difference in this world. They really made life so fucking convenient. They made life so convenient that I could go out, drink. I can go out, smoke weed, do whatever I want to do all night, knowing it's going to be some driver sitting in the parking lot somewhere ready to take me home, get me back to my kids safely. It's going to be some driver out there ready for that. Hey, look, a thumbnail of professor of nothing. <laughs> I'll fight you to cop it. Yeah. 
This is Wilty is dropping merch soon. He made a fake uniform shirt for his fake job. Real shit, man. And that's what it is, Tony, man. They always go get a real job. Go get a real job. Like, motherfucker, if this ain't real money, then my landlord wouldn't take it from me. If it ain't real money, I couldn't pay my car note with the shit. They'd be like, dude, this is a fake job. This is fucking fake money. We can't take this shit. This is fake money. You're a ride chair driver, dude. You don't even have a real job. It's like, dude, we can't accept this fucking cash. Dude, this is five G's right here. You're a ride chair driver. That's fake money. You need to go get a real job to go get real money. This is fake $5,000. This is not real. So the moment motherfuckers don't take my money, that's when I start thinking I got a fake fucking job. Because as long as they taking this real money, motherfucker, this is a real job. This is real income. It's a real way to make a living. And for anybody at a W-2 who thinks their money is better than my money, tell you what, you get 5000 of your W-2 dollars. And let me get 10,000 of my fake job fucking dollars and see who's going to take which stack. You're going to take the real job stack of 5,000 or you're going to take the fake fucking 10 G sitting over here because this is ride chair 10 G sitting on the table. Motherfucker going to be like, well, you don't have a real job, but that's really $10,000 there, right? Yeah, yeah, motherfucker, that's, a, that's real 10,000. Well, I guess I'll, I'll, I can't go with the real job shit. Sorry, a W2 motherfucker. Sorry. <laughs> it's like shit. Yeah, man, these motherfuckers crack me out with that real job shit. Like, your motherfucking money in your bank is worth more than mine. It's like, no, the fact that I have flexibility and I can have freedom to do shit, that's what, that's what makes everybody fucking unhappy. The fact that we can make money, the same money they have, but yet, he says, Jeff almost has 2,000 likes on this. That's funny shit. Yeah, so they sit there, and they'll sit up there and go, oh, man, you know what? If, if you just go get a real job, you'll be much better off if you just get a real job. Go get a real... Motherfucker, I have the flexibility. And that's what they're upset at. They don't have the flexibility we have. We sit around and say, hey, you know what? Today I want to work or today I don't want to. We ain't got to call in sick. How many of us have come up with a lie in the past since we've been doing right? How many of us have had to lie just because we didn't feel like working today? All these W-2 motherfuckers are liars. All of them are fucking liars. And that's what they upset about. We can live a truth and make money on living the truth. I can say, fuck these ragged ass people. I can say that and be true. Fuck these ragged ass apps. I ain't working to turn this shit off. I can do that any day, every day. But we ain't got to lie to somebody just to feel better about ourselves. I ain't got, oh, man, today, man, I got a flat tire, man. Man, my kid is sick, man. Oh, man, I got to take my dog to the vet. We ain't got thinking no lie. We wake up the day and we keep it real. We wake up and keep it real every day. W2 motherfuckers got to find a new lie. Man, I really want to go on this trip. Shit, I got to call my boss and tell my boss something. See, you got to be a liar. You got to be a liar to have a W-2. You got to be a fucking liar. To do ride chair, just keep it real. Shit, just keep it real. You ain't got to lie to nobody. And that's what I think motherfuckers hate. The fact that we can live in our reality, enjoy our reality, trade stories back and forth, trade energy back and forth, and we ain't got to lie to no fucking body just to exist. And these motherfuckers been lying all day to their boss, lying to their co-worker, lying to the motherfucker around the corner, lying to their wife and their husband. They got to lie every fucking day to exist. We don't have to do that. So it's like, shit. Motherfucker, if I don't feel like working Friday, I don't go in Friday. If I want a three-day weekend, I'll take a three-day weekend. That's how we exist. If I want a whole week off, I get a whole week off. I go, hey, man, can I have a week off? Man, my grandma died. Motherfucker, your grandma died two years ago. My other grandma. You say you didn't know your other grandma. Is the grandma the girl I used to date, though? <laughs> it's like, motherfuckers keep coming up with a new lie. Uh, I used to date this girl. She had a grandma. It's her. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, they work for us, man. They work for us. And like I said, we live in our reality, man. We, we exist in our reality and we love it. We love it. And I think that makes a lot of people upset that we smiling every day. We drive in the car. We can battle back. Like they got HR. They can turn grievances into HR. Oh, you know, Sally's mean to me. You know, Henry, he, he's, you know, trying to harass me yesterday. They could go to HR with it. We don't got HR. We only got each other. We only got each other. That's it. So they see us going back and forth online why are you guys always complaining why the fuck are you on a ride chair channel this ain't for you this ain't for you it's like you complaining hr this is our hr youtube is our hr department we talk to each other back and forth if you don't want to see what ride share drivers talk about back and forth say the fuck off a ride share channel is that easy is that easy i don't like these ride share people complaining all the time why the fuck are you looking at ride share people complain you're not even a ride share driver so it sounds like you the dumb motherfucker who's sitting on YouTube looking at ride chair shit when you don't even care about ride chair shit. Who's the idiot in this equation right now? You don't see me looking at no botanist shit. I'm not on a botanist fucking page. 
over there complaining about plant growth and development all fucking day. I can't stand soil. Fucking hate soil. All these goddamn nutrients in the fucking soil. Oh, man, I hate fertilizer. All this. I ain't on no fucking botanist page every day. I'm not a botanist. So what the fuck am I doing on a botany page? If you ain't in rideshare, but you complaining about rideshare shit, fuck is your problem? It's like, you in the wrong area over here, because I'll call that shit what it is. <laughs> yeah, most of us is better. We are the power. That's right, JTB, man. We have the vehicles to move shit from point A to point B. We are the logistics. We are the operators of it. They wish we were their employees. They wish we didn't have control. The government wants control over us. Not only does the government want control over us, these corporations want the control over us. So the government and corporations, like, we got a whole fucking base of free people right now. They're free. They're free to work when they want to. They're free to call off. They're free to download money and to go buy something. They're free to take off a lot. We've got some real free fucking people out there. They're really free. We got to find a way how to end this freedom because they're getting way too fucking happy with it. So what do they do? Well, let's start taking some money away. Let's start stealing. Let's not give them legal representation. We have no political representation. Rideshare is one of the only industries that has no political representation. None. We got Stephanie in Denver. That's it. The only person I know that deals with rideshare at all is her in Denver. That's it. Out of all the political offices across America, that's the only one I know that deals with rideshare. Everybody else, teachers, they got politics. Plumbers and carpenters got politics. Motherfucking construction workers, you know, whether you're working for the state or working for a private company, you've got OSHA and all this other shit working with you. We don't even have OSHA checking on us. We don't got nobody fucking with us. You think OSHA going to stop us? Hey, man, this is OSHA. Just making sure you got the seatbelt on. Let me check the tire pressure in your car. Hey, make all your turn signals work. We don't got nobody fucking with us. We just, like you said, we ghost in the system. We just floating around out there. They don't, nobody give a fuck about ride share until they can't get a ride home. Now they complaining. Man, I've been stuck here for two hours. I got to get the fuck out of here. Now you now. OK, cool, cool. You realize how important a ride share driver is because none of your friends are coming to pick you up. You're in a city you don't know nobody in. So now all of a sudden you go, well, if I'm in a city, I don't know nobody in. All I can do is use ride share. That's the best I can do is use ride share. Drivers are that friend in that city you ain't never fucking been in. Because when you get in our car or we finna laugh, we finna chat, ask you what fucking music you go. Try to be a stranger and walk up to another random ass fucking stranger and go, hey, man. If I give you 20 bucks, can you give me a ride somewhere? They gonna look at you like, no, nah, man, I don't know you, dog. But as a ride share driver, who are we? We're that fucking friend that you didn't even know you had yet. By the time you get out of the car, man, we need to change numbers, man. You cool as a motherfucker, dog. You, man, you like the friend, a brother I ain't never had, man. You like the sister I ain't never. I mean, that's what it is. We get like that. That's ride share energy, though. That's ride share energy. And motherfuckers don't even think about us until the very last minute of their day. They don't want to tip us. They want to steal our fucking money. They want to act like we don't exist when it comes to national fucking ride share day. Hey, thank a ride share driver. Let's give them all $5 a day. Fuck them. If you see a ride share driver, automatically give them $5. Nobody give a fuck about us. So when we bitching and we complaining and we ragging, it's because we want our money. We know you don't give a fuck about us. That's cool because we don't give a fuck about y'all either. We want our money, though. That's all we want. I don't give a fuck if you like me or not. If you don't like me, two star me. Give a shit. Pay me, though. That's it. Just pay me. Pay me what's fair. You ain't got to like my car. You ain't got to like my Jeep. You ain't got to like the way I drive, the way I turn corners. You ain't got to like the music I listen to. You ain't got to like shit. Just pay me. That's what we're here for. Because you ain't never heard me say, I just want Uber and Lyft to like me. Man, fuck them. I ain't worried about them. They ain't worried about me. Clearly, they ain't worried about me because they stealing my fucking money and shit. They never checking on me. Jeff, you good with groceries this week, dog? We stole about two, three hundred dollars worth of tips from your ass. You good with groceries? We could give you some of that money back. I mean, you could be in that three hundred twenty-eight million dollar fucking settlement. But yet, they don't worry about us. They like fuck these drivers, man. We gotta do what we gotta do to survive as a corporation. We got government officials. We gotta fucking pay off. Fuck these drivers. <laughs> it's like, and that's really what it is. That's really what it is. That's right, Invisible River. That's all we want. We just want fair pay. Exactly, ABC. We don't want to be overregulated. We just want to make sure we get in a fair shake in the industry where we're a bunch of independent small pieces of sand on a big ass fucking beach. I'm a piece of sand. I don't really count. If you just take me by, by myself and say, hey, Jeff, we're going to put you against the ocean. I'm one piece of sand. But if you take all of us together as pieces of sand, we just created a big ass fucking beach. 
And that water can't come up on the beach now because we all stuck together. We all created a sandbar. We're now keeping the water off the fucking beach. So me as one piece of sand, I ain't got, I can't do shit against these apps. I can't, I'm, it's only one me. It's, that's it. But let's form that fucking sandbar. Let's all stick the fucking together. Let's let the government say we need to allow these drivers to form a sandbar to keep these apps from encroaching on their fucking freedoms, their loyalties and everything like that. We need to do that. But yet the government, no, no, you guys can't band together. You got to stay an individual piece of sand. Well, I can't go against this ocean if I'm an individual piece of sand. Allow me to bond with these other drivers. Allow all of us to band together. We should all be able to band together worldwide. And now we can go against the fucking the current coming against us now. Now we can come against the theft. We can stand up against the theft because that's what the New York Taxi Association did, right? The drivers up there are a sandbar. They've got protection. They've got somebody standing against the fucking current. So when the current hits them, what happens? You owe us $328 million. But I can't call fucking Uber and Lyft. Hey, man, you owe me some money. Oh, you got a screenshot? Well, I can't get a screenshot because you told me not to talk to the fucking rider and the rider not to talk to the customer. I don't have a screenshot. Well, there's nothing I can do to help you. The upfront fare is what the upfront fare is. Exactly. But we already know those motherfuckers are always getting caught stealing. So they can't keep coming with, well, we're an honest business and upfront is what it is. And we wouldn't steal from you guys. We wouldn't take from you guys more than what we say. Then what the fuck is all these settlements for then? All these theft settlements for? What is all that about? I mean, you can't tell me that these motherfuckers are honest just because they got caught. So if every criminal in jail right now, you telling me the moment they got caught, they all of a sudden became honest. The moment they got caught robbing this bank. Oh, I'm honest now. The moment they got caught stealing that fucking catalytic converter. I'm honest now. You caught me. I'm honest now. Stealing wheels off a fucking car. Oh, shit, man. You caught me, dog. I'm honest now. You caught me. I'm honest. Just because you catch a motherfucker don't make them honest. It means they got to get their game better next time. That's all. That's all. And these motherfuckers have been doing this shit for a long time. These motherfuckers have been stealing for a long time. They've been coming up with new loopholes, new schemes. You don't break in a motherfucking house, catch them stealing the TV. Oh, shit, man. You caught me stealing the TV? Oh, I'm honest. Yeah, I'm honest now. Yeah, you caught me. I'm honest. Shit. Exactly, Daryl, man. Fucking fact. These motherfuckers, they think we stupid. I don't, I'm not trying to shake these motherfuckers' hands. I'm trying to be more transparent. Don't shake my fucking hand and act like you honest now. No. Change the way you are by doing something different. Open the fucking books up. Let drivers see what we should be getting paid. Let us see when people tip us. Let us have instant automatic, you know, back and forth with a fucking customer. At least, at least for a 24-hour period, we can contact that customer back and forth. Hey, thank you for the $4 tip. $4? Bro, we left you $20. What the fuck you mean $4 tip? Give us a 24-hour period to talk back and forth to this rider. Hey, man, you said you was going to tip me $15, dog. No, no tip came through the system. Dude, let me screenshot you this shit. They'll send me a screenshot back. That's the $15 we paid you. Oh, shit. Let me send this over real quick. Let me send this over to Lyft real quick. But see, they don't give us any type of contact with a customer. We don't get to contact these motherfuckers back and forth. When they get out, they want to, oh, we're going to upgrade the app for you. We're going to update the app and show you what store you should be going to. I don't give a fuck about the store. Let me talk to the customer for 24 hours. Give me a 24-hour window to clear up whether or not they left their phone in the car. They left the jacket in the car. They left their fucking phone charger, their e-cig in the fucking car. Give me 24 hours to say, hey, man, you left an e-cig in the car. And it, and I can't just go through the lost of, lost the fucking, you know, lost the phone part. No, no. It should be an open chat where I can just go. If you would like to have an open chat with this customer, yes. Hey, you left your phone in the car. Cool, cool, dog. Hey, you also said, you know, you was going to tip me $10. I didn't see that $10. Bro, actually, I tipped you $15. I, I didn't even tip you $10. I tipped you $15. Here's a screenshot. Now I can go to the app. Hey, man, this dude tipped me $15. And the app will be like, oh, how you know? Because we got open chat for 24 fucking hours. I could talk back and forth with this motherfucker for the next 24 hours. We should be allowed to do that. But yet they don't they don't want to give us the freedom and the leverage to keep correspondence going because correspondence leads to transparency. And once you are corresponding with somebody back and forth, the lies will be exposed. The shit will be exposed. Hey, man, I don't know what happened, but I thought the ride was going to be eighteen dollars. The ride came out to be forty two dollars, man. I don't I don't know why, dude. I only got paid thirteen dollars is all I got was thirteen dollars. Dude, why they charge me forty two? I don't know. See, that, that's transparency going back and forth. They don't want that shit. Yeah, riders should be able to see who drive them even years ago, but we're not able to see it. That, 
that right there. They're able to go see who drove them somewhere a year ago. They can go through their app and say, oh, yeah, I remember this person right here. We can't see that shit. Even though through uh, Lyft, you can go back to try to rate a passenger and you usually see a name and all that. They erase it after a while. After like a day or two, you can't see who you just took. You can't see it. So what if something was to happen to you? What if a passenger stole something out of your car that you had in the back? And all of a sudden, you go, you want to contact that passenger. You can't because you don't have any access to even know who that was. You have no access. So as contractors, we have no transparency, no access to any transaction like a person who we've done business with. We're Like I said, we're two. We're a ghost in the dark, man. As soon as that customer gets out the car, we don't hear from or see them again unless there's a problem. There is no way I can thank them. Hey, thank you guys so much for that $20, man. I appreciate that shit. Thank you for the 20 because I really needed that 20 to keep the conversation going. No, because that's transparency because the app will be like, why did he say it was 20? The, the rider will be like, why did he say it was 20 when we left him a $40 fucking tip? We left him 40. Dog, you said 20. We left you 40. What do you mean left me 40? Here's a screenshot. Oh, shit, you did leave me 40. Let me send that to the app real quick. How many times we get $1 tips, $2 tips, $3 fucking tips? Man. Yeah, and that's what I said, man. That's why I said they steal fares and tips. We got to end that shit, man. End the, end the theft and end the gouging. Hashtag E-tag, motherfucker. End the theft and gouging. Because they killing riders and they're killing drivers. They're getting both of us laughing all the way to the bank. And just like when that fucking... Um, when that uh, the whole system is designed to keep us apart from the customers so that we don't know the apps not needed at all. That's right, JTV. That's right. That's right. Because if, if they keep us apart, keep us separated, keep us divided, they can conquer the riders. They can conquer the apps. And if you look at that Warren Buffett statement, thank you, Fortune John. I appreciate that. Better ideas than the developers of the app. <laughs> thank you, Fortune. I appreciate the super chat, brother. Appreciate that. Better ideas. Developers don't want to watch a chat like this. They won't watch this shit. Fucking Spencer Fred don't even like this motherfucker. You think the developer's going to come over here? Spencer Fred don't even fucking like me. <laughs> Fuck Spencer Fred, that motherfucker. No, but even Warren Buffett said the reason why he likes Uber so much is because Uber focuses on the customer. That's what he said in his article. The reason why he loves Uber so much is because Uber focuses primarily on the customer. They don't give a fuck about us as drivers. Even Warren Buffett sees it. Warren Buffett, the whole fucking article he said didn't mention shit about a driver. Didn't mention shit about how we're treated. Our family's not seeing us for 10, 12 hours a fucking day while we out on the road, not knowing if we're going to even make it back. We could down a fucking road. So we're going to sit the fuck up there and be like, and he's, oh, yeah, man, I love the way Uber, I love Uber's brand. Uber focuses on the customers. Uber focuses primarily on the customers. Well, what about the drivers? Oh, they're not people. They ain't shit but fucking tools. Fuck them. No, we're family members, man. Some of us got husbands and wives and we're some of us are engaged. Some of us just met somebody we're excited to see. We fucking go out there and all of a sudden, bam, hitting the fucking car. That person is dead now. It's not a tool. It's not a driver. That was a human. That was a human being is now dead. It's out of a system. Friends, pets don't see that person no more. Family don't see that person no more. Man, man. Yeah, we saw it out of the slave class. That's what it is, JTB. I tell motherfuckers, say what it is. Don't be scared to say what it is. We got sold out as a slave class. We're the underbelly, the underbelly. Everybody's thinking W-2s are better than us because we're viewed as the underbelly. We're viewed as the slaves, the last of the fucking Mohicans and shit. <laughs> Logan said, Spencer Fred head ass motherfucker. <laughs> I need to make a shirt to say that old Spencer Fred head ass motherfucker. Man, man, man. I shared the story of my community post. Yeah, brother. Hey, JTV, on your community post, man, like I said, it's a lot of people need to like check out some of your content on there because you really dig into this shit. You dig into it in a cerebral way that people can really think about it, really think about what we're going, what we're going through right now. And just and sit there and to see the elites, see the elites trade stories back and forth in the media. You know, appreciate, I'll respect Dara. I love Dara. I love, you know, David Richter. I love, they're treating the customers amazing. They're treating the customers amazing. These motherfuckers never say two words about the drivers, the people who actually make this shit work. They never say two words about that. I love Uber as a brand. Uber's amazing. Can't believe how amazing. Well, ask a driver about it. Ask a driver about it. Say, hey, what do you think about Uber? What do you think about Lyft? Same thing motherfuckers at the UAW thinking when they on strike. 
when the UAW people are on strike at all these fucking plants and these warehouses, when all these teachers are on strike at their jobs, they love teaching the kids. They want to teach the fucking kids. They want to go back to their classrooms. Why are these teachers on strikes? Because they're not being treated fairly with the amount of work they're putting into. We the same fucking way. So for motherfuckers to sit up there, well, why don't you go get a different fucking job? Next time you see teachers on strike, why don't you tell them, go get a different fucking job. Quit striking. Quit striking against these fucking kids. Quit. Don't worry about going back to school. No, quit striking. Go get another fucking job. Go work at Walmart some fucking where. Tell a teacher that shit. But you tell that shit to ride share, but you won't say that shit to teachers on strike. Oh, we stand by teachers on strike. We stand by teachers on strike. If they don't like their fucking job, why don't they go get another job? Because it's not about that. It's about they deserve more money, more benefits. They deserve more importance in what they're doing. They're educating the next generation of fucking leaders, teaching them how to read, write, and all that shit. They deserve better out of all the tax dollars we paying. We giving 100 billion fucking dollars to people overseas, but we won't pay shit to the lady teaching my kid how to read that's going to be a leader one day in this fucking country. That's what pisses me off. Teachers deserve a lot fucking better because I know what they do. It's more than just go get a different job. Go get it. No, it's more than that. It's more than that. Just like with ride share, it's more than, well, go get a different job if you don't like it. Go get it. Do Anytime you go to HR, I would tell any W-2 person, the next time you go to HR, if you got a complaint and HR looks at you in your fucking face and goes, why are you in HR complaining? Go get another fucking job. See how you fucking feel. So you know, wait a minute. Well, what you talking about? Go get another job. I, I can't make a complaint. I can't complain. Not no no go get another job. If you come in here complaining about parking or somebody's you know harassing you or anything, if you're complaining about how much you're getting paid, how much you have to work, go get another job. Get out of fucking HR. We're not here for that shit. Get out of HR. Go. I bet they'll fucking flip their fucking wig. Mac man, hold the fuck up. You just told me to go get a different job. <laughs> go get a different wife. She talked too much. Exactly. That's how they treat rides here. Always go get a different shit. Go get a different shit. Driving the wealth, driving the wealth, my brother was good. Back in the mix, back in the mix. Because I need a shout out from Jeff. It's been a rough day. Hey, brother, I'm finna go out there and get it, man. I'm finna go out there and get it with you. It's about to get rough for me. It's five o'clock. I got what 20, 30 minutes to get up to the airport. So this live is gonna be kind of short. Like I said, I wish I can go longer. If if it's slow tonight, I'm coming back online tonight. Cause I'm not gonna be out there in these fucking streets for the holidays if we ain't getting paid right for it. I'll just have to come back online later. Say we the drivers, motherfucker. <laughs> Exactly, Ryan. We the drivers, motherfucker. This is what we do. Jesse, come to the morning show. That's right. Lip rides are dead in San Diego right now. Oh, you know they doing something shady right now, man. They doing shady something right now. Because even last night, it was kind of like, like I said, I did some recording last night, and I was like, dude, these rides are just kind of shit. This shit don't look right. Something is not right for it to be a holiday season. It, for, it was a last mile delivery drivers and ride share. Drivers must stand together with all gig workers and laborers of the lowest class. Yeah. Because if we don't all stand together, like I said, I could just be one little piece of sand on the beach. You throw me in the ocean, you ain't ever going to see me again. And that's the one ride share driver going against corporations. You put them against the corporate, you'll never see them again. But you form a sandbar. That ocean got some shit to go through to get to the other side now. You put a sandbar up there, that ocean ain't going to be so quick to do shit now. The ocean got to get to that whole fucking sandbar. It's got to get through the levee. It's got to get through that shit. And that's what we got to be for each other. We got to start banding together. And too many fucking channels out there are still on like competitive shit. Oh, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. I'm this, I'm that. Because they don't give a fuck about ride share. They only give a fuck about themselves. That's it. Now, when I care about somebody's family, I care about people not living in the hood. I care about that because I'm from the hood. I know what it's like. I hope you get more money so you can get into a better situation. Even if you move, you know, four blocks away from motherfuckers you can't stand. That's four blocks you got between you. Now you ain't got to deal with that shit. Your kids ain't got to deal with that shit no more. It ain't like, oh, we doing ride share to all live in fucking mansions. Sometimes we doing ride share just to get out of the situation we in to get to the next level. That's it. We ain't trying to live in mansions right now. We're just trying to move from this point to the next point. Motherfuckers, like think I'm using ride share so I can go buy a Lambo. I'm actually trying to buy a cheaper fucking vehicle right now. I'm trying to buy some $5,000 shit. I'm tired of driving in $30,000 shit. I'm trying to buy cheaper shit because I want to change my situation. That's all. So and then ride share is not all about trying to be the greatest, the best, the richest, the most wealthiest, the best car. The, it ain't about that all the fucking time. It's about making moves the right way to keep this shit as being a career, being a career. That's right, JTB. We the 300 that could become the 3 billion. We the 300 right now. We could become the 3 billion. 
Motherfuckers got to learn how to stick together, though, man. Like, people got to learn how to stick together. And when I sat and I saw that video the other day from uh, the Moderns, whatever it was, I can't remember that channel now, but they did that. That shit was over 300,000 views on that video, talking about how drivers and riders are being stolen from. Over 300,000 views on that fucking video. That is massive for that many people worldwide, worldwide, to look at what's going on in rideshare right now when it comes to contractors against corporations. Because we don't have any political power. We have no political power at all. So I'm glad Stephanie was on there. Like I said, JJ down in Florida. I hope he talks to his mayor and keep me posted on that shit, brother. Hit me up, ubergeepaz at gmail.com. Keep me posted on that shit, man. Because it might be something that I could use to come talk to the people in my city. No telling. Like I said, I don't mind going chopping up with some politicians for a couple of hours. I'll do that shit. I'm not going to get paid for it, but I'll do it any fucking ways. It's like shit, motherfuckers. Like, Jeff, what'd you do? I parked my shit downtown. I had to pay $14 of parking, but I think we're making some headway. <laughs> it's like shit. When you hit 7K subscribers, you got to give away a shirt. Fortune Jama said, when you hit 7K subs, you got to give away a shirt. You know what's funny? Fortune, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell everybody like this because I don't, I don't really talk about shit like this. But I've given away so many shirts already. I just don't talk about it. And it's a lot of people out there who are drivers right now who have either bought shirts from me or we they've helped me in certain ways. I've given away so many shirts. I just don't talk about it because I don't think that's important. What's important is us sharing energy all the fucking time. I mean, I I could give away shirts. It don't make a difference to me because all I'm gonna, either I'm going to make the money through through YouTube and you guys helping me build the fucking channel up to where I can go take 50, 60 bucks to go buy some more vinyl because to buy this vinyl. It's not what it used to cost in 2015. Like, I used to buy this shit in 2015, $35, $40 a roll. I'm paying $60 a roll now for that shit. So now I use some money that I make to put into this stuff, and I still give away shirts. I still make shirts. It all gets recycled. Like, I tell motherfuckers, I don't live in a mansion. I'm not trying to be rich off this shit. I'm just trying to share energy back and forth. And if I can afford to share energy back and forth, I do. I do. Because a lot of people, you know, sometimes all it takes is to wake up. And to put on a cool ass shirt and be like, hey, man, I'm going to go out right now and do something. And you're going to just go out and, and just fucking start kicking it and just riding around. And people, hey, man, I like that shirt. You changing somebody's day just by them seeing your shirt in Walmart. Man, I like that. So, all right, what the flip did I miss this week, man? I see you in this. Appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Real shit. Real shit. Yeah, money back to the community, man. That's what I do. That's what I do. This driver's going to tell you, you know, I meet him on the street. Be like, hey, I'll, I'll hook you up when I see you, man. I appreciate what you're doing out here, man. And a lot of us, you know, is a lot of YouTubers, especially gig tubers, they like to have like, you know, giveaways and gimmicks to get people to watch their channel. I think giving us giving away the game to each other makes more money for each other. We figure out the energy. What up, Drew? We figure out the energy it takes to make it in ride share and delivery. And we get that game away for free where a lot of channels want you to sign up with Patreon. or they want you to, you know, join their, you know, subscriptions and do all this shit just to just to get like a, a head a little bit, just to get ahead a little bit. If I'm helping you make ten dollars more an hour, 15 more an hour by using Paw Patrol or by knowing how to situate yourself around, you know, the Lux black cars, the Uber black cars, following them around. This is how we help each other out. Because to me, it's just like, man, man, it's, hey, Jesse, I believe it, brothers, that you're humble. That's why, Jeff. And I believe it, man. It's like, I've been through a lot. I've been giving a lot of grace on this planet. A lot of people have helped me get to where I am. This, My life has not been a one-man show. I'll tell you that much now. A lot of motherfuckers in silent that I can just give props to all the time. And they'll say, yeah, I remember that day, Jeff. I remember that day. They may not even know how they affected me that day, which got me to change. Like my man Long, he's the one who got me, like he was on one of the chats earlier. He's the one who even got me involved in ride share. The fact that I met this guy and he got me involved in ride share. People like that have changed my life in ways that I would have never imagined. And they don't even know how important it is, how integral of a, of a role they played in my life. Long ain't never gave me shit. He never gave me a shirt. He never gave me a pair of shoes. Motherfucker ain't never bought me a hot dog. But he gave me something greater than that. He gave me information. He gave me courage. He gave me knowledge. And look at what it came to. And that's why I'm trying to do this shit to people. You give somebody something, you can give them a fish. Give them a fish. That's cool. But when you teach them how to fucking fish, they can feed villages. They can feed whole fucking villages. And that's what we do on this ride share channel. I love, like I said, I give stuff away all the time. And, and people will tell you, oh, he gave me free shit before. He always giving away shit. I gave King James a whole fucking camera, a dash cam one time. But it's like, that's just how I am, man. You know what? 
we can't die with this shit. And information is the last thing you want to die with. Something in your head is the last thing you want to die with. I don't want to go out today with information in my head. Something happened to me and me not have the ability to give it to somebody who can use that information. So I give it. I give it. I, there are all no secrets on my channel to where I'm like, oh, if it is something I don't want to put on my channel, I'll Harriet Tubman that shit. And you can just email me about it. <laughs> that way they don't see it on the channel. Man, you are all leaders that will save the human race. Fact. Real shit, JTB. And I tell these drivers, man, we're all drivers out there. We're leaders in our community. We're the ones out there changing the fucking way shit's really going. We're changing the way things are going. We're talking to the riders in the car. We're talking to drivers on the street. We're the leaders. We are the voices. Each motherfucker in the chat, each person on the comment, we're the voices out there. It don't make a difference if you're a YouTuber or not. You know you're important to the community because of what you said, how you've influenced somebody, how you changed somebody's trajectory for their fucking day. You've led them in a certain way. That's it. Game applied means elevation. Real shit, Logan, man. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Game applied means elevation. Elevate, don't play a hate. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying, man. Oh, it's like 5.15 now. My alarm's about to go off in a second. I got to get up to the airport. But, man, I appreciate you guys sitting on this chat. It's been a short hour and a half. It, uh, we just getting into it, man. It's an hour and a half, and we just really getting into it. Y'all know how these live streams go, man. We be on these podcasts getting it in. It should be good, man. It's like it's like watching a movie, and the good shit don't really start until we get warmed up. <laughs> I'm like, damn, damn. This is why the professor on your video. What do you do now? <laughs> Professor's just there. He's just there. That's all. Humility and vulnerability. Hey, Dalton, thank you for the super chat, brother. You're expressing the depth of your character. Give us all purpose. It is the light and the darkness we sometimes cannot see. Keep burning bright, brother. Be the beacon. Dalton, I'm going to tell you something, Dalton. A lot of people don't know this. And, and it's funny that you said that. Like, I love the fact you said that in your super chat. I used to do rap a long time ago. I produced music. I was rapping and everything else. The very first album, the very first album I ever put out actual album i have mastered put out paid for produced on the back there was a picture of a lighthouse and the lighthouse was like it was raves crashing around rocks and everything but all you could see was the lighthouse and i put that on the back of my very first album because i said we are beacons of light sometimes we're the we're, we're the only thing you can see in all the craziness all the darkness we're the only thing you can see is that lighthouse if you see that lighthouse you know that you're in a safe place you can get there see Alarm going off. There we go. Time for to go to the airport. But that's why I did that, man, Dalton. So the fact that you said that, and I, I put that album out in like 2000 and shit, 8, 2009. It was 2009 when I put my very first rap album out. And I put a lighthouse. I didn't put me on the whole album. I put a lo uh, logo that I paid a guy for. I paid him 250 bucks for a logo. He made me a logo for the front. But on the back, like you see rappers always putting their self on their albums. And I put a lighthouse on my shit. I put a lighthouse on it because the lighthouse meant something to me. Exactly what you just said. I've always seen, thought that in my life, brother. I've always looked for people in this world who have been beacons to kind of go to, to be my safe place to say, you know what? And all the chaos, all the crazy shit, that's where I can go. That's the lighthouse. So, bro, that super chat right there means a lot to me. And, and the fact that it's the, the last super chat I got, that's 11-11, man. The fact that you just put that on there and I had to go at this time means... I needed to see that. I needed to see that. You needed to say that at this point in time. You needed to say it. I needed to see it. So I appreciate it. It was a great way to end this live stream, brother. Great way to end this live stream, Dalton. Man, this is, you don't put a light under the table. You said it high for all to see. Word. Real shit. Real shit. I'm all about the lighthouse. Man, I love lighthouses because of what they stand for to me. They mean a lot. They mean a lot. So, hey, I got to get my butt out of here. Let me go change clothes real quick. I got to shoot up to the airport. If it's slow out, I'll be back online later while you guys are working. But if it's kind of quick out and I can make some money, I'm going to try to go out and make some money my damn self. Let's keep this holiday going, y'all. Be smart out there. Get them cards made up on Vistaprint. Put your car on the card so they know who they're contacting when they contact you for a ride. You ain't got to put your license plate and all that on there, but just put your car on there. Say, hey, you know what? Hit me up if you need a ride. Somehow we got to win in this ride share game because, hey, Uber and Lyft, Steal fares and tips. That's what we're going to say today in class. I'm going to teach that shit to some kindergartners. <laughs> All right, brother. Fortune John, well, let's do it. Next live stream going to be lit. Hey, JTB, I'm, I'm working on it, brother. I'm working. You know me. My live streams be so sporadic. I didn't even want to get on today because I had to do my shit, but I'm like, I'm going to set my alarm. 
and I'm going to get my ass to the airport on time. I'm going to do it. So I appreciate you guys from coming, chilling with me. You know what I'm saying? Much love, much respect. Happy Thanksgiving. Let's get out and make this money. Let's go do it, y'all. Let me end this here.